Good evening. I got a love Jones. Um, having some technical difficulties. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Started uh, the live, but nobody showed up. So I'm just going to record uh, and just speak as if you're in the room. Uh, and then if you want to watch it later on and see what I had to say. That's cool. And the gang, you feel free to uh, go ahead and leave your comments as you see fit. So tonight, uh, I'm Guy Code. I'm really excited about this evening. I, I, I think that the, uh, the subject matter tonight is really important. I think it's something that uh, impacts uh, men especially. Uh, and what we're talking about is self-care, right? We're talking about uh, self-love, self-focus, uh, keeping the focus on uh, ourselves as men while we're dating, all right? But before I do that, I do have some maintenance that I want to take care of. Uh, I'm on a personal journey of improvement. I'm trying to uh, better myself, make myself a better man, uh, become the very best man that I can be. And uh, one of the areas uh, that I struggle with is humility. Uh, I am not very good at always, one, admitting that I'm wrong and being humble about being wrong and simply apologizing. So I do want to do that tonight. I'm apologizing to all the men uh, of I've Got to Love Jones. And my apology is based on a post uh, that I made a few days ago uh, where I asked a question. Now, the question was benign, but the post uh, and the way I framed the question uh, was very problematic uh, because I uh, played into stereotypes and, and made generalizations about men that are very unfair. I perpetuated a, a mindset or a narrative about men that isn't true. And as a result, I ostracized a lot of men uh, and um, I... What's worse is I spoke against my own, uh, my own interests. I, I don't believe that tearing down a man is required to build up a woman. Uh, I, I don't like, like it when uh, men pander to women by uh, you know, beating up or destroying other men. And that wasn't my intent, but that was definitely impact. And I appreciate the brothers who came and let me know, hey, um, you know, yeah, you can't do that, man, you know, <laughs> and they did it with uh, love and they did it with, uh, you know, support and uh, brotherly love and support. And I appreciate them uh, for that. So uh, having said that, now I want to go ahead and move on. So I hope you, you take my apology and we can move on from there. Because the other thing I believe is once someone apologizes and atones for our actions, uh, we move forward, not backwards. So let's get to guy code. Let's talk about what we came to talk about this evening. So my thought process is that uh, men must remain loyal uh, to the concept of them being their number one priority. Uh, men must take care of themselves. They must love on themselves. They must build themselves up. And I think a mistake is made when men do all of these things, get into a relationship and then stop. As a matter of fact, I have a theory and my theory is that when a man stops uh, engaging in his rituals, when a man stops uh, doing, uh, carrying out his routines, when a man stops uh, going and seeking out opportunities to enjoy his interests, uh, to accommodate a woman and make time for a woman, when he removes those things from his daily routine, uh, he actually makes himself a lot less desirable to a woman. And I'm going to explain why I believe that. I believe that the man you are when you meet a woman is the man you need to remain. Uh, I believe that by, by not continuing and again, the rituals and routines and interests that you uh, have enjoyed while you were single, when you get into a relationship by abandoning those, you actually make yourself less desirable to the woman uh, for, for a couple of reasons. Um, one of the biggest reasons is you're changing the game in the ninth inning. You're switching things around. Uh, you went from doing these things to not, you know, to, to making time for her and, and, you know, avoid and stop, stopping doing all of these things to now all of a sudden you want to do them again and she gets confused. Number two, and I think the, the biggest reason is all of the things that you're doing right now as a single man that's making you desirable to a woman. Uh, if you stop doing those things, then you're going to be less desirable. Uh, the, the impact is going to be uh, the effect goes away. So let's break this down. In order to understand this, I think one of the first things we need to do is we need to um, define or determine what makes a man desirable to a woman. 
Okay. Now I'm not professing to, to, uh, that I know what women think. I'm not saying that I know I can get inside the mind of a woman. I, I'm not saying that at all. I have no desire to be in the side, in the, inside the mind of a woman. Uh, but I do think that, and, and for the women who are coming on, uh, on the live right now, go ahead and chime in and let me know if I'm, uh, if I'm right or wrong. I think that desire in a woman is a result of attraction and perceived value. Here's what I mean. It's, it's been said that men are visual creatures, right? And we accept that concept, but the reality is that women are just as visual as we are. Women want to be attracted to the man that they are in a relationship with. Uh, they don't want to be in a relationship with someone that they don't find attractive. As a matter of fact, if you're not attractive to the woman, then she's probably not going to even give you access to her so that you can get into a relationship with her. So there must be some level of attraction, okay? Now, understand, fellas, that the fact that she's not attracted to you is really not that big of a deal. I, I promise you. One, you can overcome the fact that she's not attracted to you. It's not a deal breaker. It's not the deal breaker that women make it out to be. And I'll explain why here in a second. And two, if she's honest with you, about the fact that she's not attracted to you, then she's actually doing you a favor. Because the last thing you wanna do is be in a relationship with someone who doesn't find you attractive. Like for me, I'm 5'9", and I see it all the time. I want a man who's six feet tall and all this other stuff. And that used to really get on my nerves. They used to really bother me on some level because I felt like, you know, you're discounting me over something that I can't control. But here's the reality. If my height bothers you, then be honest with me. Don't get into a relationship with me and give me hope when you know the situation is hopeless. So attraction, don't, don't worry about that. If she's not attracted to you, then move on. There's somebody else who is attracted. Somebody else, all of your features, all of your characteristics, they are perfect. They are looking for someone that looks just like you, okay? So don't worry about attraction. Again, and it's not the deal breaker that you think it is, and let me explain why. A woman who finds a man attractive doesn't necessarily want to date him. I used to work with a guy who uh, a lot of women at my job found attractive, and they were very vocal about how uh, attractive he was. And I remember talking to one of the women that I worked with, and I, you know, somehow we, the conversation got on him, and I was like, you know, she was telling me, man, you know, he is fine, I, he's so fine, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, why don't you shoot your shot? You know, why don't you position yourself so y'all can go out? She's like, oh, I would never date him. I would never date him at all. I mean, he's attractive, but I'm not attracted to him. And that was like, <laughs> that blew my mind. And after the conversation and, and, and probing and, and, and getting more information, what I found out was, although she was attracted to him or found him attractive, she didn't see value in him. She didn't see where he could add value to her life. She did not see the perception or did not, um, view the, the perception that he the perception that he had he was going to add value to her life by being in her life. So there are a lot of attractive men out there that women are very attracted to, but they don't see the value in him. And because he lacks value to them, not now that doesn't mean he's not valuable. It just means that they don't see the value in him as it pertains to them. That attraction doesn't without that value doesn't equal desire. However, if you have a woman who's attracted to you and she perceives value in you by the things that you say, by the way you carry yourself, uh, by the things that you do, uh, she, is, she sees that you have the potential to add value to her life, there's value in you for her, then when you add those two together, attraction and perceived value, you get desire. Now she wants you. She's willing to entertain you. She has a desire for you to get closer to her and add that value that she sees in you. Value is so strong. Value is so potent that a woman who sees value in a man, who, who sees him as a, a, a man of value to her, will actually look past the fact that she's not attracted to him. She'll start to date him, develop a relationship with him, and one day she'll actually say, He's attractive. He will become attractive. It's almost like she, you know, hangs her, hangs her head to the side and squints her eyes. And she's like, oh, damn, he's fine. How did I not notice that before? It's because of his value. 
And that's why I say attraction is, don't worry about attraction. It, it's, not, it's not that big of a deal. Because if you have enough, you need to bring enough value. If you're able to illustrate your value to a woman and she is, she sees that as value, then she'll develop an attraction for you. Okay. So how do, how does you, how do you create desire in a woman? Attraction, value, put them together, and you have desire, right? So of course, the logical question would be then, as a man, how do I illustrate my value to a woman? Well, it, you don't consciously do that, okay? And here's what I mean. There's something very manipulative, uh, it's something that feels very manipulative when a man starts to um, inquire about a woman's desires. What kind of man are you looking for? What kind of man do you usually date? What, uh, what is it that you want? What is it? There's something that feels very manipulative about those questions because in the back of her mind, she's wondering, are you asking these questions to get a better understanding of me? Or are you asking these questions so that you can imitate the value that I see or that I want in a man? Are you going to now pretend to be the type of man that I value? Are you going to change, fundamentally change who you are to accommodate uh, the things that I value in a man? And, and to prove my point, um, Yancy, who is a brilliant woman, um, she actually posted this, I think on her page or maybe in the group, where she actually posted the fact that she uh, was at a conundrum, trying to decide, is it, um, should she tell a man how to treat her so that he can treat her the way she wanted to be treated, you know, treated so she can love her the way he wanted, she wants to be loved, so should she provide him instructions so that he does it properly, or is providing those instructions only setting herself up for manipulation? Why do women feel this way? Well, honestly, it's our fault. It's our fault, fellas, it really is. Uh, because we are competitive by nature. Uh, we compete at everything. We love competition. Uh, not only that, we love to try to seek out a competitive edge. And the proof of that is, look at the sports uh, that we watch and participate in today as, a, as they um, have evolved from the way they started or the way, the way they, won, they were years ago. So if there was no um, desire or, or, or desire to seek a competitive edge, then football players would still be wearing leather helmets, right? The reason they don't is because people got stronger, they got faster, they hit harder. They were trying to get that competitive edge. So we're no different when it comes to dating. We see a woman that we like, we see a woman that we want, we pursue that woman, and then we start to make changes to ourselves in order to make ourselves more palatable to her. We start to, um, to evolve, if you will, into a person that she says she values. Or uh, we will go on her social media pages or we will read her post in the group and we will start to, again, try to become the type of man that she values. And although it sounds like we're trying to be a better fit for her, the reality is it's very manipulative because, and here's the key, what we are essentially doing is we are setting unrealistic expectations based on behavior and actions that are not sustainable. Let me say that one more time. By changing who you are to fit what you think a woman wants or what she says she, what she, says she wants, you are, um, you are setting unrealistic expectations with behavior and actions that are not sustainable. You can't be who, you not, who you're not, right? You can only be who you are. So you may get away with it for a little while. So for instance, let me, let me give you an example. Let me break this down so uh, it's really broke. So let's say that for uh, a woman that you find attractive, that you're pursuing, she says that she sees value or that she uh, enjoys a man who loves jazz, okay? Uh, that's really important to her because her father loved jazz and she, uh, she just finds that so attractive and so fascinating when a man can appreciate uh, classic jazz. Now, you hate jazz. You don't see the point. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to you. All we're hearing is if some guy play a trumpet, I, I, this is dumb. However, in order to make yourself more palatable to her, to more, more desirable to her, you start to, um, you know, 
listen to jazz, you start to buy jazz uh, albums, you start downloading jazz, you strategically make sure that when you start the car on the date, her favorite Miles Davis song or John Coltrane song comes on, you are painting a very false portrait, an effective but false portrait of who you are so that she sees more value in you. And it works. Most of the time when we, when we put on that facade in order, and then again, it's not nefarious. We're not doing it all the time just to be manipulative. Sometimes we're doing it just to weed out the competition. Sometimes we're doing it just to make ourselves stand out so that she doesn't look for anyone else. But we can't sustain it. You, you like what you like. And you're not gonna sit here and, 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 and you know, dive deep into this. Because here's what happens. Your fake passion for jazz is going to be a point of, um, of, of connection for her. So of course, now she's gonna start looking for opportunities for you to enjoy jazz together. Now you're gonna find yourself at jazz clubs, you're gonna find yourself on jazz cruises. You're gonna find yourself at uh, uh, sunrise or, or sunset brat jazz uh, brunches and all this other stuff. All the while, you don't like jazz, but you did it just to get an edge, just to create more value. And although it works for a little time, ultimately, when it's revealed that you don't like jazz or or whatever it is that you try to change about yourself, you actually decrease her desire for you. So what do you do? How do I illustrate value uh, for a woman without trying to figure out what it is that she values? You don't. What you do is you set out to be, while you're single, while you have time, while you have uh, focus, you set out to be the very best version of yourself that you can be the very best version of yourself that you can be. Now, how do you define the very best version? That's all on you. That's according to your values, your beliefs, and your priorities. Here's, here's some game for you, okay? There is no such thing as a good man. I'm gonna say that one more time for the people in the back. There is no such thing as a good man. Why? Because the term good, the adjective good is subjective. What I think is good, you may not think is good. What I think is a good investment, you may think is a waste of money. What I th may think is a, a good album, you may think it is, is horrible. What I may think is a good team, you may think is trash. So the concept of good is really based on the person who is describing it. And it, it serves us no purpose to try to force ourselves into these boxes that people create uh, called good based on their perceptions, their experiences, and their desires. So you're never gonna be a good man to the masses. There's no such thing as a universal good man. All you can do is be the very best man that you can be, be a polished version of yourself, whatever that means. Just pursue, pursue happiness, pursue prosperity, pr pr pursue uh, uh, um, peace, <laughs> pursue uh, opportunities to learn, increase your knowledge, increase your awareness, just be better than you are. And here's what happens. All those characteristics, all those traits, all those things that you find uh, are a priority or, or are important to you, there is a woman out there who values the same things that you value. You share the same value system. You share the same belief system. And you may even share the same interests. So as you selfishly uh, pursue uh, a better version of yourself, doing the things that you enjoy, seeking out opportunities that, that make you happy, then what you're doing is you are displaying that value. So she sees you. She sees you doing the things that you love. They, people are always asking, where do you find good men? Where do you find good women? I'll tell you where. They're out doing the things that they enjoy. And if you happen to enjoy those things, or you happen to have an interest in those things, then you'll bump into each other. So don't try to be a, a, a good man or a great man. Just be the very best man you can be according to your definition of what's better. I made the mistake of thinking that if I started adding all the trappings of wealth, of um, you know, success, if I start wearing nice suits, nice shoes, if I, if 
I start doing all of these things that I witnessed or that I heard women and other men say were uh, valuable or were desirable, then women would flock to me. They didn't. They didn't. You know why? Because it's not a universal concept. And there may not be an attraction. And there may not be other value added uh, by me to her. So changing fundamentally who I am is not going to result uh, in any uh, more opportunities. Now, it may improve my well-being. It may improve my self-image. It may make me feel better. But that should be the only goal. So it frees you. It now allows you to do the things that are based purely on your desire your dream, your vision. Have you ever wondered why uh, you, you hear these stories of these very wealthy and successful people who are living the dream? I mean, they have, they're traveling, they're performing. From the outside looking in, you would think they have no problems. But these are the very same people who smile on stage and then kill themselves. Why? Because they, they're not fulfilled. There's nothing inside of them. They took, they had this dream let's say of being an actor or a singer. And they were very specific on how they saw this dream come into fruition. And then as they shared the dream, someone came along, took a red pen, marked up their dream, gave them an edited version of it and said, here's how you succeed. They followed that blueprint and although they achieved success, they achieved it with a modified edited version of their dream. So there's this big hole where all of their stuff was, and they feel empty, even though, for all intents and purposes, they're successful. It's the same thing with dating. When you start abandoning the things that, are, that you are passionate about, the things that are important to you, so that you can make time for her, then you are creating a hole that cannot be filled. Not by her, not by sex, not by anything else. Because they're your dreams, that are being altered. They're your vision. It's your vision that's being modified and changed. So stick to what makes you happy. Allow your desire to drive you. Remain your number one priority. Now, I know that's counter to everything that we've been taught as men. You know, put that woman first and all this other stuff. No, you remain your number one priority. As a matter of fact, even after marriage, remain your number one priority. I have a son. I, I still remain my number one priority. His needs do not come before mine. Okay, I, I see the numbers starting to drop with, with the people watching. Let me explain myself I'll tell you, hey, before you start typing and, and attacking. Um, when I talk about needs, I'm not talking about Laszlo's hierarchy of needs. I'm not talking about you know food, water, shelter, things of that nature. Of course, those needs have to be met uh, by the person who is responsible for me meeting them. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is the emotional and spiritual and physical needs that we all have that gives us a piece and of and a piece of who we are and an identity that we can uh, latch onto. So if I'm emotionally broken and I'm not taking care of myself and I'm not looking out for myself and I'm not uh, investing in myself emotionally and mentally and spiritually and even physically, then when the people that count on me need something from me, I have nothing to give. I have to uh, fill the pot before I start pouring it out to other people. But as men, sometimes what we do is we, we empty ourselves into our children, into our wives, into our jobs, into all of these peripheral things, and we never get fulfilled. And, and here's the, the worst part about all that. We buy into the, the, the rhetoric or the, the fallacy that as long as we keep her happy, then we can have peace. Let me tell you something. Your peace is not a bargaining tool for anyone's happiness. It's not. Your peace, your happiness is your responsibility. And there's no amount of sex no freaky things she could do, uh, no amount of things that she can buy you that's going to replace your peace. So take care of yourself first. Make sure that you are your number one priority, your spiritual, your emotional, 
your physical needs that, that give you, that produce a healthy mind, body, and soul, you must attend to those and make them a priority if you want to be valuable to the woman of your choice and the woman that chose you. So how does abandoning your rituals, your routines, your interests, how does that decrease your value? Well, for two reasons. Let's start with the first. While you're single, you are engaged in certain activities that you can selfishly pursue without permission and without feeling any guilt. Your time belongs to you. And here's the thing, your time, believe it or not, is your greatest commodity. I get so frustrated when I see these conversations about money and who pays and how much did you pay, and when should she pay and all this other crap. Money is, is great and it's, it's, a, it's useful, it's a tool, but money comes and money goes. There have been times I've had more money than I've ever seen in my bank account which doesn't necessarily have to be a lot. This is more than I've seen. And then there's other times where I'm floating checks, you know, for I'm dating myself, where I'm writing a check two days before payday, praying they don't cash it uh, before I get paid. So money flows in and out of our lives. And focusing on money or focusing on the lack of money only brings more lack. Forget about money. Focus on your time. You can't get that back. Your time is finite. There's only so much time you're given on this earth to do the things that you were sent here to do. And if you're giving up that time to make someone else happy, then you're robbing yourself of the opportunity to live fully in your purpose. But we do this, men. We do this, especially when it's a woman that, are, that we're really feeling, especially if it's a woman that we really like. We start the dating process by giving up our uh, the things that are important to us, our priorities, and making time. I, I don't like it, and I've said it. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm guilty of it. I don't like it when I hear women say, if a man really wants you, he will make time for you. Yes, that is true. But the problem is no one has taught us how to properly, properly excuse me, make time. Making time for someone doesn't mean removing things from your schedule, taking things off your calendar and replacing it with the things that that person wants to do. You don't take time away from uh, the things that are important to you to give it to someone else. That's not how making time works. You don't give up the things that are important to you so that you can make someone else's needs and desires a priority. By doing that, you, you are, again, going back to what I said early, uh, earlier, by doing that, you a false, or excuse me, you are um, creating unrealistic expectations based on behavior and, and actions that are not sustainable. Let me give you an example. So personally, I have a standing haircut appointment every Friday at one o'clock at my bar, okay? Uh, and I'm not alone in this. Men by nature are ritualistic. We love routines. Most men do the same thing every single day, at the same time every single day. We get up the same, we drink the same uh, coffee, uh, we put our, you know, we, we, we only thing we switch up is the accessories, but for the most part, we take the same way to work. Our, our, we love our routines because our routines bring us comfort. We like routines because routines are, are things that we can depend on, and we know where we're going, we know where we're at, we know uh, what, what's happening next. Even the most um, spontaneous man has routines. He, there's certain things he does on every single, uh, every other Thursday or every other Saturday or the third Friday of the month or whatever the case may be. Okay. So standing haircut appointment every Friday, one o'clock at the bar. Right. And what that produces is when I leave the barbershop after I get my haircut, I feel better because I look better. And fellas, I mean, come on. You know how it feels walking out the barbershop with a fresh cut. You know how you just feel like you're the king of the world, right? So I want that feeling as often as I can and as often as I can afford. So I make that appointment every Friday at one o'clock. So let's say I'm dating someone who says, uh, this Friday, I'd like to go to lunch. Well, that's going to uh, affect 
my one o'clock standing barbershop appointment. If I go to lunch with her, then I'm not going to be able to make it to my appointment by one o'clock to get my hair cut. Now, what I used to do is say, cool, I'll cancel my appointment. I made time for her and she's appreciative. She loves it. But unfortunately, I've also set a very dangerous precedence. I basically told her that her desires trump my priorities, the things that are important to me. What I should have done is say, either um, I can go to lunch with you, but Saturday morning, I gotta go to the barbershop, or Thursday evening, I gotta go to the barbershop. So I'm still honoring my commitment to myself to, to do the things that I want, but I'm moving things around to create opportunities for us to spend time together because I want to. I mean, there's nothing more enjoyable for a man to be in the company of a woman that he really likes. There's nothing more enjoyable for a man to see the woman that he cares about smiles and, and provide opportunities to, uh, to facilitate her happiness. We, we want you to be happy, but it should not be at the expense of our priorities. Well, then she says to me, well, um, we, you can't do it Thursday night uh, because we're suppo you're supposed to meet my uh, co-workers and me uh, at, for drinks for happy hour. And remember, Saturday, we're going to my mother's house uh, because we, you know, she's having uh, a breakfast over there. Now, at this point, I have a choice. I can either set a dangerous precedence and say, okay, babe, I'll cancel my appointment. We'll go to brunch. I mean, excuse me, we'll go to happy hour. We'll go to lunch and we'll go to your mom's house. Or I can introduce compromise early in the dating phase, early in the courtship phase. The earlier I introduce compromise, the easier it is down the line for me to compromise. But here's the thing, fellas, you cannot um, surrender your life to a woman and keep saying yes, 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 yes. And then years later say, why can't we compromise? It's because you never have. And for her, it isn't so much that you want to go get a haircut. And in your mind, that's what you're thinking. I just want to get a haircut. How could you be mad at me for wanting to get a haircut? Don't you want me to get a haircut? Don't you like the way I look when I go get a haircut? You know, it's not, that's not the thing that bothers her. It isn't what you're going to do. It's the fact that all of a sudden, it's become a priority. It wasn't important when we were dating. When we were dating, you canceled haircut appointments all the time. Now, all of a sudden, you know, you have to go get your haircut. What, 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 what's going on? You see, we set unrealistic expectations based on behavior and actions that were not sustainable. So you introduce the concept of compromise. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I need you to make a decision, okay? I have to get a haircut, okay? That's, that's important to me, all right? So we can either go to lunch on Friday and then I get my haircut on Thursday and I skip happy hour and we go to your mom's house on Saturday or I get my haircut on Saturday, you know, whatever. But I'm gonna get my haircut either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. I'll let you choose which one of those events that you want me to accompany to you is the most important or is the least important, and I can miss it. Well, that's not fair, I want you to do it all. I cannot do it all, and, and nor will I. And you're not, you're not being mean. You're not, you're not being you know, uh, aggressive, or you're not, you're not trying to, to deny her anything. You're setting the tone and setting her expectations for a realistic uh, concept of you. She has to understand that you are not about to give up your life for her. Not because you don't love her, not because you don't want her, not because you don't desire her, but because it's not fair. And she's not gonna like the end result. So you introduce the concept of compromise. And you don't be afraid to say no. Gentlemen, no is empowering. <laughs> no uh, sets boundaries. No uh, makes it sure that people, everyone understands that we don't have to have the shared priorities, but we do have to respect each other's priorities. But how can you do that if you never say no? You have to say no sometimes, not all the time. You find time to say yes, but for the most part, you're not gonna fundamentally change everything that you are to accommodate her. And she may appreciate it, and it may be tempting to do it because the reaction that you get is appreciation. 
And there's nothing like being appreciated. Oh, baby, thank you so much. You were so sweet. I'm so happy. We're going to do all three. And but, but you feel disappointed because now you have to walk around without a haircut. The other thing is your priorities don't have to be justified. If you wash your car every Saturday uh, at 9 a.m. Or, or whatever the case may be, that's your thing, then that's your thing. And don't allow anyone, not your woman or anyone else, to convince you that what you're doing isn't a priority. It is for you. And the, the, the harder you fight for your priorities, the less pushback you're going to get when you start engaging in those activities that are important to you. All you're going to do, you're going to wash your car? That's that. You, you can do that anytime. No, I can't. I need to do it right now. I need to do it you know, at 9 a.m. This, this is when I do it. So if you're going to plan anything for us, plan around that. You're not being hard. You're not being, um, you know, unflexible or inflexible. Rather. What you're doing is you're setting boundaries. You're making sure that your priorities remain a priority. Why is this important? Here's the second reason. The things that you're doing right now as a single man are producing the man that she was attracted to and saw value in, okay? The fact that you get your hair cut every Saturday uh, produces, you know, the tight beard and the fade and all this other stuff that she looks at and goes, man, my man is fine, all right? The fact that you go to the gym after work three times a week uh, produces the body that she looks at and says, man, my man is fine. The fact that uh, you go with your friends, uh, you have a poker night or you, you meet up at the bar, you know, uh, every other uh, Thursday or every other Friday or whatever, whatever the time that you do that is, that's an opportunity for you to be in the company of other men and, and, and take, play, take part in this valuable fraternal um, fellowship. It, and it's so underrated, but there's so much value in sitting amongst men and sharing ideas and just talking. You know, it doesn't even matter what you're talking about because you feel safe in that environment because everyone has the same, you know, mindset that we all have the same belief system. We all, we all follow the same guy code, right? If you stop doing those things, you stop going to get your hair cut as often, then all of a sudden that tight beard and that tight fade that she likes so much is now overgrown and scraggly and, and, and you look a mess. If you stop going to the gym, then that body that she was so impressed with is now getting fluffy. <laughs> if you stop going out with your friends, then now you've removed that outlet, that opportunity to just decompress and say anything you wanted to say. And all of that stuff that used to be uh, spilled out at the bar or spilled out at the cigar shop or spilled out over the coffee, uh, uh, the uh, poker table now stays inside of you. And here's the thing. I'm not a physics major, but I do know this. Energy is never destroyed. It's only transferred. And if you become a ball of stress, then that ball of stress is not going to be destroyed. It's going to go somewhere else. And guess where it's going to go? To the person that's closest to you. Why? Because now you feel denied. All of a sudden, you start to feel like your time is being dictated by someone else. You feel trapped. You feel like, man, this is not fair. You get to go out with your girls and get your hair done and go to brunch and all this other stuff. All I want to do is hang out with the fellas. We ain't looking at girls. We ain't, we ain't, I, I ain't trying to leave you. I ain't trying to cheat on you. I just want some time to myself. I just want to go do the things that I used to do. And all the while, she's saying, you're not the man that you used to be. I feel like you've changed. I feel like uh, you've become someone totally different. And she's right. You have. Because you're not applying the proper maintenance on your life that you did when you were single. The rituals that you took part in. When I talk about rituals, I'm talking about the way you shave. I'm talking about um, the fact that you, you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> you know, how you sit. Like, I have a ritual when I smoke cigars, right? Uh, I pick out my cigar. I clip the cigar, I heat the end of the cigar, I put the cigar in my mouth, I light the end, I take a few puffs. It's ritualistic in the way that I do it. That's important to me. 
as, as insignificant as it may sound to other people, for me, it is so important. But I start abandoning those things. I'm not moving things around to make time for her. I'm taking things out of my life that are important to me that, that produced the man that she was attracted to. So she's right. You have changed. She's right. You're not the man that she fell in love with. You're not the man that walked up to her and said, hey, how you doing, gorgeous? You lost your confidence. But how? Because your confidence was not in the fact that your beard was tight. Your confidence had nothing to do with the fact that you had on a fresh pair of J's. Your confidence had nothing to do with the fact that you felt uh, like you know you had the greatest job in the world. Your confidence was the fact that you were engaging in things that made you happy. That's how we build confidence. Because we are actively pursuing those things that bring us pleasure. And there's nothing more confident uh, building than being happy, being content, experiencing joy. So you're not the man that you used to be. You're less desirable. Why? Because you voluntarily gave up opportunities to improve yourself in order to please her. You voluntarily removed the necess necessary things from your life that make you uniquely you, that allow you to become the very best version of you in order to make her happy, to meet her needs, to put a smile on her face. You deserve the, the, the pushback that she's giving you. You deserve the confusion that she has that you've turned into someone else, a shell of the man that you used to be. Not only that, you're angry. Because again, what you're thinking about is how easy it was when you're single. I mean, there's it, a, a hidden movement behind this, man, if you really think about it. Men who, are, who feel trapped in bad relationships, uh, they created that trap. They're a prison of their own prison. They are in a prison of their own creation because they sit and fantasize about the way it used to be when they had all the time in the world, when it seemed like they had more money, when it seemed like they were just everything was just firing. You know, everything was just better. It's an illusion. You didn't have more time. You didn't have more money. What you did was you had less influence on how you spent your time and money. So it seemed like it was in abundance, right? But when you voluntarily give that up, then all of a sudden now you feel trapped. And so you start to long for the single life where you're in control, but it isn't necessary. You can have that life or, or, or some version of it and still be in a, a happy, uh, loving, fruitful, meaningful relationship that isn't centered around her. You just have to make sure that you lay that foundation during the courting phase, during the dating phase. It can't always be about her. Some of this has to be about you, your happiness, your joy, the things that make you feel good. And I told you the last, uh, last week, there is something very endearing about being in spaces for a woman, being in spaces where men experience joy. So let's go back to the routine, all right? Every other Thursday, you know, two Thursdays a month, you meet up with the fellas at the bar, okay? Now, you don't want to take that off the schedule. You can move it around if the fellas are cool with it, but you don't want to take it off the schedule. So you tell the fellas, last Thursday of the month, let's bring in the wives. Let's bring in the girlfriends. Now, you're going to get pushback because this isn't a universal concept. I mean, man, no, hell no. It's my time, bro, right? But if you bring your woman along, you know, maybe not every other Thursday, but maybe one Thursday, you know, uh, a, a quarter, uh, whatever, you bring her along and those men go home and tell their wives, their girlfriends, man, you ain't going to never believe what Tony did. This dude then brought his girl to guys night. Can you believe that? Hmm. <laughs> you're creating you're making time for her. You're bringing her into your activities. Maybe not guys night, maybe, maybe something else. But you're, you're making compromises to accommodate her needs, but without robbing you of your, uh, your priorities, your needs, OK? Here's the other thing. And, and I kind of I kind of uh, touched on it, but it's, it's important. The, 
the fact that you want to go back and reclaim that time, okay? I'm, uh, uh, I can't even think of her name right now, but I'm reclaiming my time. I used to get my hair. And, and at some point, you are going to do this. If you haven't, if you've been in a long-term relationship like I have, at some point, you will do this. If you follow the 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 uh, the, the the routine that uh, that most men do, you give up all this time at the beginning, and then all of a sudden now you're trying to reclaim the time three years or five years into the marriage. At some point, you're going to come to your breaking point. And you're going to look. I'm going to get a haircut. Okay, this is ridiculous. I shouldn't have to fight you over a haircut. I'm going out with the fellas. I'm 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 going to the gym. I mean, I'm, I'm falling apart here because I'm not doing any of the things that I love. Everything is about you. So you're starting to feel this resentment towards her. And she's confused. What are you talking about? We're not doing everything that I want. You want these things too. Where's she getting that from? From you. From the, from the, uh, the unrealistic expectations that you set with your behavior and actions that weren't sustainable. You lied to her. I mean, not maliciously. But you made her believe that the things that you were doing with her were the things that you want to do. Well, if I take you somewhere and you enjoy it, then why wouldn't I want to take you back? Why wouldn't I want to do it all the time? Be honest. No, I, I do not like going to the mall. I will go because, you know, you want to go. But this isn't my idea of a good time. I'll behave and I'll put on a smiley face and I will engage. But... I don't like this. <laughs> this isn't fun for me, okay? I'm doing it because of you. But don't lie and give her the impression, oh, I love going to the mall. I love doing it. No, be authentic. Be you. That way she falls in love with the real person and not this, um, this, this you know, false representation of yourself that you created in order to woo her and to trick and manipulate her into seeing value in you. And so you're demanding opportunities to go do the things that you used to do. And you're confused because she's acting like you're going to the strip club. She's acting like you're going out to cheat. And you're, 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 you literally are like, I don't get it. I don't understand why me going to get a haircut and go watch the car and hang out with my boys is all of a sudden a big deal. It isn't. The reason that she's so upset the reason that she's so bothered by the fact that you want to go do these things is not the things that you're going to go do, the activities, it's that you want to go do them all of a sudden. All of a sudden, these things that were not a priority before, these things that you gladly gave up before, now all of a sudden you're making demands. You're saying, I must do these things. Now, I know this book has caused uh, a lot of controversy. But in my book, <laughs> A Man's Guide to a Successful Affair, I talk about the fact that men are uh, ritualistic. We love routines. And a man communicates to a woman that something is wrong by deviating from his routine without reason. Okay? So come home every day, 5 o'clock, without fail. I get on the same, I get in my car. I take the same freeway, I take the same crossroads, I park in the same space or close to it. I do the same thing every single day. I'm home by five o'clock. And if I'm gonna be late, I either text or call. But when my behavior changes without explanation, I'm communicating something's wrong. Either my time is being occupied by someone else or I'm reclaiming that time by stealing it away from the relationship and yes you are stealing it no 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 it's mine I, I'm, I'm i'm going to get it yeah you are but you fell into a routine and now here we are in the bottom of the ninth inning and you got a damn basketball in your hand you're changing the game you're switching it up and that causes confusion for a woman because here's the thing that women want above all things you listening and women please if i'm wrong talk to me Tell me, okay? Women want consistency. They don't care who you are. They don't care about your shortcomings. They don't care about your weaknesses. They don't care about none of that crap. All they want is for you to be who you said you were. Do tomorrow all the stuff 
that you did yesterday and today. Don't switch it up on me. Don't change up on me. Even if the change is, is, um, is for something that is not, you know, uh, inherently wrong or, or nefarious, don't change on me without uh, at least an explanation. Here's why. Consistency creates security. I know my man. I can count on my man. When he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. When he says he's going to be somewhere, he's there. I can, I can take it to the bank that he is who he always was, right? Some, it's some version of himself. The foundation, the, the, uh, the essence of who he is has never changed. He's gained weight. He's lost weight. He's, he, has, he had hair. He had a beard at one point. Now he's shaving. Uh, he even uh, got a perm. <laughs> Whatever. But his, his character hasn't changed. His integrity hasn't changed. The things that I value in him have never changed. So when you start demanding opportunities to get away from her, which is what she hears, then you're changing the game. You're creating discomfort because you're no longer consistent. I used to be able to count on you to come home at five o'clock. Now you didn't come home at seven. Where were you? I was getting a haircut. You mean getting a haircut? Well, I can't get a haircut any other damn time. You got me going here, you got me going there. Whoa, that was never a problem before. You said you liked those things. I did those things so that we can have fun together. You cannot abandon who you are and think that your woman is going to continue to find you desirable. You can't. So what's the bottom line? I'm running out of time. The rules for courtship and dating, okay? Again, desire for a woman, uh, the way a woman establishes desire for a man is attraction and value. She sees something she likes, and she perceives something that's good for her. Put that together, she wants it. That's value. You are not responsible for creating value artificially based on information that you gain from her. That's manipulation. You're lying to her. The way you create value in a woman is by um, doing the things that bring you happiness, committing to being the very best version of yourself that you can be, okay? Now, are you going to now be, create value in every woman? No. You will create value in the women that find your values, that share your value system, your beliefs, your interests, so forth and so on, okay? Don't be afraid to say no. No is empowering, and it's not that big of a deal. You're not gonna hurt her feelings. You may disappoint her, but she's gonna gain a respect for you because she knows where the line is. You've established it, you're not a pushover. You stand firm on your word. And so she can respect it. That's how she gains respect for you. Not just through your yeses. Through your yeses, she gains admiration for the way you make her feel. Through your noes, she gains respect. Okay? Um, introduce compromise early in the relationship. Uh, early. Even in the dating phase. Hey, uh, third date. Uh, I got us tickets to the Rockets game. Uh, I don't like basketball. That's fine. Not a problem. I still want you to come with me. We're gonna have fun. And I tell you what, afterwards, we'll go to that dessert place that you like. Okay, right? You're creating, you're introducing the concept of compromise early on so that when you need to use compromise later on, it's not a new concept. Because if you say yes to everything now and never introduce the concept of compromise, then when you ask for a compromise, she's not gonna see it as a compromise. She's gonna see it as a sacrifice, okay? Your no should not be shocking to her. What do you mean no? No, she's heard that since day one, she, it's fine. Um, remain the man she met. Remain true to your authentic self. Your passions, your purpose, um, your vision, all should be established right now while you're single. I got some news for you, fellas. You ain't got to be where you want to be for a woman to see value in you. You just have to be on the way. That's it. She doesn't need you to be, uh, you know, the king. She just wants to know how you plan on getting the crown. 
I look at the Barack Obama and, and Michelle Obama, whose relationship, you know, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but from my vantage point, that man, that's 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 hashtag goals right there. <laughs> and there's so much credit given to Michelle for looking past the fact that she was more educated than uh, uh, Barack at that time. Uh, she had uh, she she actually was his boss at that time. Uh, there's a story that he had a hole in the bottom of his car when she, you know, the passenger side, she could actually see the ground as they were driving. And so much people, so many uh, people uh, just praise her for seeing the potential in, in uh, Barack Obama, right? And so then they take that message and they tell women, you see the potential in men. Okay. Let me explain something to you. Potential is what could happen if you continue working towards your goal. That's potential. The possibility of what will, will transpire as a result of you continuing to work towards your goals, your passions, and your purpose, and your vision. Potential is not one day I may. Potential is not a dream. Potential is not a fantasy. The difference between a dream and a goal is action. Show her your business plan. Show her your vision statement. Show her your blueprint. Show her how you plan on getting from point A to point Z. It doesn't matter where you are. It only matters where you plan to go and the effort that you're putting in now to get there. As a matter of fact, she cannot wait, especially she sees value. She cannot wait to use her talents, her time, her treasure, her influence to give you the push you need. I've always said Barack Obama was going to be somebody. I mean, the brother was not going to be working at McDonald's. No disrespect to McDonald's, but you know what I mean? He had more potential than that. But she wasn't the key to his success, in my opinion. He was going to be successful. But she may have been the key that opened up the White House. Because I can imagine what he went through on a daily basis. Somebody had to, to remind him who he is. No, 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 no. Don't, don't get upset. Don't get pissed off about what they're saying about you. L look at me. You are the president of the United States. You are Barack Obama. How did he establish that? By staying true to that concept from the very first day. He never let her define him, nor did he let anyone else define him. He never used... Um, a, a modified version of his dream and start chasing it. That's why he was so successful. That's why she had so much admiration for him. That's why her love was able to, to um, endure eight years in the White House of the, the worst vitriol uh, any president, in my opinion, has ever uh, experienced. So if you want your Michelle, then you need to be true to your Barack. <laughs> that means be true to yourself. Right now, while you're single, be the best version that you can be of yourself. I'm not saying get rich. I'm not saying get a better job. I'm not saying, you know, lose weight. I'm not saying any of that. Embrace who you are and then make improvements that you feel are necessary that will bring you happiness. Not based on someone else's definition of happiness and not based on someone else's definition of better. Anytime someone tells you, I'll tell you what you need to do. They're speaking from their vantage point, and their vantage point may be limited. They may not have the same view that you do. And so there were, and, and T.D. Jake said this, and I thought it was brilliant. Giraffes should not, um, you know, uh, entertain the, the criticism of turtles. It's not because the turtle's wrong. It's because the turtle's reporting from the vantage point of, you know, their location. But why would I believe what you're saying down here when I can see from up here. Don't abandon who you are to accommodate her because the more you chip away at the man that, she's, that she is attracted to and sees value in, the harder it is for her to remain attracted to you, to remain uh, in a place where she sees value in you. Be true to yourself, put yourself first. Be the very best version of you that you can be of you. And I promise you, finding a good woman will be the least of your problems. <laughs> Especially 
if they see value in you. Hey, I had a good time tonight. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, this this is always so much fun for me. It really is. Uh, and I, I encourage you to uh, talk to each other, to uh, uplift each other. I love the communication that's going on in the group right now. I love the dialogue that's going on in the group right now. Uh, I think it's so valuable for all of us to share ideas and, and to just bounce things off of each other. And what I love most is that we are respectful. Uh, there's a maturity uh, within this group that really provides um, a, it provides a, a level of safety and a level of assurance and that we can be vulnerable with one another because we don't feel like we're gonna be attacked. So keep doing what you do. My uh, salute to Corey and all of the administrators, all of the moderators, all of the contributors, and especially you, the people who are just trying to find love. <laughs> Have a good night.